Hello BYU Cougar fans. Welcome to this year's rendition of a sneak peek at BYU football. I'm going for the 2013 season. I'm getting this out a little later than originally planned. But then but the coaching changes kind of shook things up a little and we had to change things around a bit for the site, but we're getting to it now before spring practice starts, which is kind of the real unofficial start of the 2013 season. So real quickly, go through each position group, uh, talk about uh, where it's at and what it needs to do to be ready for the 2013 season. Going from the top, quarterbacks. Right now, quarterbacks are at a 5 out of 10 as far as being ready to start the season. First priority, settle on a starter. That will probably be Taysom Hill. But the coaches, they need to need to settle on the starter and then you know, get that starter as much experience as possible in the new offense that's being installed. And also, I mean, the quarterback needs experience. Very little game time for all of these quarterbacks. And that's something you can't, uh, you can't manufacture. That will have to wait until the season comes. But reps and you know, get, getting used to the, the personnel, building chemistry with the receivers, the old line, the backs, that's, that's something they can work on here in practice. I'm excited. I think there's lots of potential from this group, especially Taysom Hill from what we saw last year. But uh, time will tell. Next, running backs. The running backs are sitting at a 7 out of 10. Some of that has to do with the new offense being installed and the new coaching staff. And also, as great as Jamal Williams was last year, he still needs to get better. And the running back position needs some depth. I mean, I like Williams a lot. I'd like to see him carry the ball uh, primarily like Harvey Unga did and Curtis Brown did before him. But you, you definitely have to have depth at running back. That's a position uh, a team really needs depth. And there's some guys there who could provide the depth. Uh, still waiting for our first look at Adam Hine. Uh, he, he really was a, a mystery man last year after redshirting. He was supposed to you know get some reps and and we're finally supposed to see what he can do, but he was plagued by injuries and then uh, never got to see the field because of how well Williams was doing. Also, keep an eye on Paul Lasique, his continued development, and look to see his role expand in 2013 as more of a, a bruising power runner, which is something BYU didn't have last year. Really need to work on those short yardage situations. Pick up those first downs on, on third and one, third and two. That has to be automatic like it was before. Next, wide receivers. With everybody coming back, no key losses, but still just a seven for them as well. Uh, I mean, you got to have more than Cody Hoffman. Someone else has to step up. Someone else has to you know, keep the defenses honest. I mean, if Cody Hoffman was able to do what he did when he was the only receiving threat, I mean, imagine how effective the BYU offense will be with two viable receiving threats, or even three. Um, I like the newcomer Michael Davis. Interested to see what he can do and how, with his speed and his ability to uh, make plays happen in the open field. Interested to see how quickly he'll be integrated into the offense and you know what role he might have. Hopefully Ross Apo can have a breakout year this year. We'll see if it really was a quarterback issue or if uh, he's you know there, there, there's something deeper, or if it was a coordinator issue, just not being able to get him involved in the offense. Wide receivers are another strong group, but. Uh, you know, we'll have to see how they adjust to the new offense that's being installed. Offensive line. Right now they're at a five, replacing replacing three starters, three valuable contributors last year. 
Several guys are not coming back because of injuries as well. Uh, lots of new recruits who uh, are expected to contribute, make a change. So lots of questions marks with the offensive line. Improvement does need to be made. If not, this will be another uh, tough, uh, tough season to deal with emotionally as we watch and see uh, BYU just uh, flounder in mediocrity again. Yeah, the, I mean, opening holes for the running backs, especially in the short yardage situations, as previously mentioned. Protecting the quarterback with an inexperienced quarterback. You know, protection is key. Give him the time he needs to, to, to get his feet wet and you know, make great throws, uh, see the field, and not be rushed. Uh, obviously, I'm optimistic that BYU will, the new coaches and these new players, they will get uh, the offensive line in shape and that this will be uh, a better year in the trenches. Now on to the defensive side, defensive line. Right now I've got them at a 6 as far as being ready to start the year. It helps a lot to have Ethan Manu Maleuna coming back. off a medical red shirt and Bronson Kafusi excited to see what he does this year in a full-time role but after that we've got a lot of question marks uh, a lot of guys there with potential ready to uh, you know to, to be given the opportunity to make plays to contribute I'm excited to see the guys that uh, that we got you know John Raheem Peoples he he could be another Ezekiel Ansa with you know with with his size and his all, all his other attributes. Um, Theodore King, he was a late addition to the recruiting class in 2012, redshirted last year. Uh, he seemed to have a lot of uh, potential and upside. Uh, I I'd like to see what he does as uh, as a defensive end. We've got a couple other players there, Remington Peck had a few highlights last year, early in this season. If he can bulk up some, and I'd like to see what see him uh, have a big role and, and make a lot of plays. Uh, fortunately, I mean we we should be pretty well well set with the defensive line as long as these guys can come in and uh, you know play to their potential with the the strength that we have in the linebacking core still uh, they should be able to make up for the inexperience that we'll have on the defensive line so yeah moving on to linebackers uh, got them at an eight right now Lo big losses in the middle Brandon Ogletree, Juan and Kavenga you can't just replace them and plug in new players uh, and expect them to play at their caliber. But fortunately, BYU has both Kyle Van Noy and Spencer Hadley returning on the outside. And uh, Wani Unga and Manoa Pekula are expected to be the starters at the two middle linebacking spots. And they got a good amount of uh, playing time last year, especially Unga. And they, they they should be able to grow into their roles, grow into those positions. And the question is how fast. BYU will need them early in the game against Texas. So uh, that, that will be key for the defense. But with Kyle Van Nguyen and Spencer Hadley there, both athletic, both quick, and both able to, to cover... A little extra space for, for each of those guys so while they're still getting fully adjusted. Defensive backs, I've got them at a seven. We're returning Daniel Sorensen and Joe Jordan Johnson, who both started the full season last year, and then Craig Bills, who played quite a bit, including starting the last few games after Joe Sampson was suspended. 
So as long as BYU can work its magic again with another uh, junior college defensive back for, to replace Preston Hadley, then the defensive backs should be solid again. But as, as great as we thought they were last year, they were exposed at times. Still the weak link on BYU's defense and improvement can still be made. But I like this group. Daniel Sorensen was a lot better last year than he was as a sophomore right off his mission. And I can't wait to see what he does again this year as a senior. So we're looking good in that area. Now special teams. Two key losses on special teams. Punter Riley Stevenson and long snapper Reed Hornung. Stevenson replacing him will be really, really big. Uh, that's a big part of the reason I only have special teams at 2 out of 10 as far as being ready to start this season. Uh, it, it's really hard to place a, a value on what Stevenson brought to the team the last couple of years, but especially last year with his booming punts when BYU needed a booming punt and then his ability to pin opponents deep, deep, deep in their territory. We're talking inside the five-yard line to control the field, posi field position game. It, it's going to be hard to find a, a punter to replicate that. BYU also needs to work a lot on the place kicking. Justin Sorensen was decimated psychologically last year. And so rebuilding his confidence, getting him fully healthy and back to playing kicking the way that he kicked in high school that is a must field goals came up big last year in determining the outcome of a few games and we can't have that again this year with the with a strong defense coming expected again and the offense with the potential to struggle at least early in the season you know, field goals can be crucial. Games will probably come down to a, a last uh, a, a field goal kick in the fourth quarter. As the Utah game, as the Notre Dame game, as the, the Boise State game possibly could have last year. So special teams needs the most improvement for next year. And that's, uh, that's the sneak peek for 2013. Go Cougars!